Hey, my awesome people, exam is just on your head and I know the time is very crucial. That is why I have come here to teach you some of the very important and high probability images which are going to be asked in your NEET PG. So be with me for just 10 minutes and I'm going to give you pure high yield information which have very high probability of being asked. So in this video, I'll be teaching you some cell types and the pedigree. So pedigree is something which have been asked already and has a very high probability of being asked in this examination. So just 10 minutes of yours and I'll try to complete the most important ones for you. Also do subscribe if you like the content. So this is the most commonly asked image or the cell which is given so can you name it yes it is the Hodgkin disease and what you are seeing here is the Reed Sternberg cell showing you the owl's eye appearance so it is the most easy and the most common one which is there in this video now can you name this condition and the cell shown here so yes this is G6PD deficiency showing you a bite cell or degmacyte. So degmacyte is another name of bite cell. So they can give you this name degmacyte which is basically an abnormally shaped RBC with one or more semicircular portion removed from the cell margin. How you are going to differentiate the bite cell or degmacyte from the schistocytes. So bites in these degmacytes are smaller than the missing red blood cell fragments seen in cystocytes that means the cystocytes will have a bigger fragment missing from the rbc while in this bite cell only a marginal portion of rbc will be missing from here so mostly these bite cells or degmacytes are seen in oxidative damage or oxidative stress conditions like in g6pd so what happens in g6pd deficiency is here uncontrolled oxidative stress causes hemoglobin to denature and precipitate to form inclusions called Heinz bodies and these these bites are the result of the removal of denatured hemoglobin by the macrophages in the spleen so first they form this denatured hemoglobin and then the spleen removes this denatured hemoglobin part from the RBCs giving this bite cell appearance now rapidly moving to this image showing you the giving you a memory of your first year that is the Sahili's hemoglobinometer so it is based on the conversion of hemoglobin to acid hematine which has a brown color so just knowing this will do for you now tell me the cell you can see here so yes it is an RBC but what whether B erythrocyte or A reticulocyte. So this is a immature RBC which is seen in anemia. So it is a reticulocyte. Why reticulocytes? Because these have a reticular network of ribosomal RNA. So these reticular RNAs become visible under a microscope with stains like methylene blue. So that is why it is not a RBC, particular RBC, but a immature RBC called as reticulocyte. Moving to this is an image of Hinge bodies. Now basically Hinge bodies or Hinge Ehrlich bodies are the inclusion within the RBC composed of denatured hemoglobin. So these Hinge bodies are the inclusion bodies of hemoglobin, denatured hemoglobin. So they are composed of hemichrome and oxidized form of hemoglobin which is unstable and rapidly precipitates. So these Hinge bodies are important and they are also seen in the, as already told, in the G6PD deficiency, any oxidant drug if you give or in unstable hemoglobin states. Now tell me the condition you can see here. So you here you can see different RBCs of means same shape but different sizes. So this is basically a picture of N isocytosis a medical term which depicts variation in size observed in patient's red blood cell. So how you are going to diagnose an anisocytosis? So basically identified by the red cell distribution width and they are classified by the MCV. So if there is anisocytosis with microcytosis that means the RBC size are smaller so mostly seen in iron deficiency and sickle cell. Anisocytosis 
with macrocytosis seen in folate or vitamin b12 deficiency autoimmune hemolytic anemia and chronic liver diseases etc now increased red cell distribution with is seen in iron deficiency anemia thalassemia major and like that so this was the basic thing you needed to know now can you identify this cell whether it is drepanocyte or acanthocyte so mostly you have confusion in these two, means these two options so it is basically a picture of acanthocyte why because here what you can see is a spiked cell membrane of the rbc so you can observe spikes in the cell membrane of the rbc and what is the peculiar feature here is so peculiar feature here is that these are the irregularly spaced and usually blunt projection from the normally smooth round cell membrane of the erythrocytes with central pallor so these are acanthocytes and not echinocytes why echinocytes are also speculated red cell with spikes evenly spaced but these are irregularly spaced so do remember acanthocyte for your future thing also we have discussed bite cells and spherocytes so what is when um, bite cells and cystocytes the difference that bite cells have a marginal loss while is cystocytes are the helmet shaped cells that have a bigger loss of the membrane so these are basically caused due to fragmentation on a artificial heart wall so these cystocytes okay and spherocytes are seen in hereditary spherocytosis so these are the different sites uh, types of rbc now tell me this condition whether this is n isocytosis or poikilocytosis so here you can see abnormally shaped rbcs of different shapes basically not size but shapes different shapes you can see here if i i, I want to depict here so it is poikilocytosis and not and isocytosis you can go and see the previous image where they had same shape but different sizes here they have different shapes that's why it is poikilocytosis and not an isocytosis now this is a typical peach picture of sickle cells yes so what is the other name of sickle cell if you see here none of the option gives you a uh, Uh, answer as sickle cell so these are drepanocytes okay so irreversibly sickled cells are also called drepanocytes and seen in condition you all know that is sickle cell anemia so drepanocytes is another name of sickle cell so this part is a very important thing that is the papirhemal body so this is a another inclusion bodies and these are formed by the abnormal granules of iron formed inside the red blood cells in routine blood stain so these are basically inclusion bodies of abnormal granules of iron so these are formed by phagos phagosomes that have engulfed excessive amount of iron and thus formed the papirhema bodies so when you will see this condition you can see this condition in thalassemia sideroblastic anemia hemolytic anemia and post is splenectomy when you you can see howell jolly howell jolly bodies so where in spite uh, means in place of this iron deposit you will see dna inclusion so these are seen in a splenemia hypersplenemia severe hemolytic anemia the howell jolly bodies where the howell jolly howell jolly bodies are the dna inclusion hinge bodies I already told are the hemoglobin inclusion seen in oxidant drug g6pd deficiency unstable hemoglobin papirhema like this here is shown in thalassemia sideroblastic anemia hemoglo hemolytic anemia hemoglobin h inclusion seen in hemoglobin h disease basophilic stippling where the the inclusions are found by ribosomes are seen in lead poisoning thalassemia sickle cell disease mds so basophilic stippling in lead poisoning now coming to the important part of pedigree analysis so this is one part which is neglected by you all which at one time you were master of that that is during your neat during your pre pg times that is while you were entering the medical thing but you find it missing missing some missing uh, links from your memory so can you tell me this pedigree denotes 
so anyway you can divide it in autosomal dominant autosomal recessive x-linked dominant and x-linked recessive so first of all you should see whether it is linked to x chromosome or not so if there is gender predisposition so if you see here the mother is transmitting to males in the first generation okay so there is some sort of x linked thing so always remember in a x linked recessive thing the mother will transmit to his son and if you denote it like if you give it here wait yeah so if you just see whether it is x linked recessive or x linked dominant you will realize that this is a x linked recessive thing why because here if you see from a diseased mother the males are affected but females are not affected because they are getting the normal x and when it is present x y that is the mother diseased one x is giving you the disease while in females it is not giving the disease because it is recessive if it would have been dominant then in females also it would be a single diseased x would be giving the patient the disease the child the disease that means x diseased and x normal is not giving disease in females so it is a x linked recessive it will become more clear once i move to this image yeah so here i can explain you all the four types that is autosomal dominant recessive and x linked recessive so as we were talking about x linked recessive pedigree so here mother to son transmission will be there and you can see here ki there is skip also so in recessive diseases there will be a skipping scene means from one generation to other generation there may be presence of skip skipping but in dominant types it is the skipping of generations is not seen now in case of x linked dominant the mother would uh, the father would be affecting all the females in in the first generation so like here if you see the x linked dominant the mother uh, the father is diseased and father is affecting all the females why because x here is diseased and dominant so in females even if the one x is present which is from the father and it is diseased then fem females are showing the disease pattern because from father it, the x goes to uh, the daughter and from mother it is going to the son okay now autosomal dominant don't have this sex predisposition and we see here a different pattern so this skipping is same like here you see autosomal recessive there is skipping present from one generation to another and in autosomal dominant there will be uh, involvement of both son as well as daughter so there is no x linked thing that you will find so in any x linked thing either daughter will be involved or son will be involved so there will be sex predisposition while in autosomal thing there won't be any sex predisposition so remember this and i hope you will make it correct if it is asked in your future neat pg examination so stay happy be confident everything is going to be good everything which you have read already is going to help you so don't take too much pressure everybody is in pressure the one who keeps his patience and consistent efforts will win the game so you are going to win the game don't worry and be focused thank you